Hey everybody, welcome back to Laptop Seniors. Today we're going to be going through CD ladders. And I do not mean CDs that you, you play you know, for music and ladders like somewhere to store them. We're talking about bank CDs, certificates of deposit, and how to really invest in them in a smart way. And the smart way that everybody will tell you about is a CD ladder. And what a CD ladder is, in a nutshell, is, and I'll make just three years. It could be five years, it could be 10 years, you can do it any way you want. But I'll take a three-year one only because it's easy. You, on today, you go to the bank, and I'll use the example in this instance of $15,000. You have $15,000 you wanna put into a CD. Ooh, what do you do? Do you put it into a one-year CD because you're not quite sure how everything is gonna go? Or do you do the ladder? I'm going to show you what's involved with the ladder. Now, I just want to say right now, everybody tells you the ladder is the right way to go. I can tell you absolutely for doing the math like 20 times here because I kept thinking something is wrong with this picture. This is not coming out the way it's supposed to be. The ladder is not 100% absolutely right. Right this moment, and I will explain why, right this moment, doing the ladder is not the way to go. You do not want to do the CD ladder. Normally, it's the way to go 100%. So I'm gonna take you through the, the real normal ladder and how to do them. It's pretty simple, actually. And then I'm gonna show you why it's not working right this moment, why you don't wanna do the ladder at the moment, but at some point down the road, you will wanna do the ladder. So let me explain what a ladder is. A ladder is basically, and I'm just assuming again, three-year term, and you got $15,000 to invest. So you wouldn't take 15 grand and just plunk it down on one thing, three year, two year, one year. You're just not going to do that. You're going to take the $15,000 and you're going to cut it in three because we're looking at three years. You're going to take 5,000 bucks into a three year CD, 5,000 into a two year CD, and 5,000 into a one year CD. You're going to do it all on the same day. Hey, I want to buy three CDs. Well, what do you want? I want a three year, a two year, and a one year at today's rates. Okay. And typically what that will come out as, the three year is gonna pay you more than the two year is gonna pay you more than the one year. That's the way it normally works. Right this moment, because there's inverted yields out in the market, the longer term rate is gonna be lower than the short term rate. It's exactly the opposite, it's inverted. So let's go to the computer now and I'll go through that with you. Let's start here, bankrate.com. This is a US thing, it's US banks, it's US rates. It's, this is gonna be exactly the same for any country in the world. Whatever the rates are, they are. This is pure math. This has nothing to do with country politics or anything like that, it's just math. So these are the current CD rates for January of 2024. Today happens to be January 25th and what I'm gonna show you is today's rates. We need the rates for three years, two years, and one year. This is now, this is while the inverted rate and the inverted yields are going on. First, in order to understand what a simple execution of the CD ladder is, let's go to this. You're seeing year one, year two, year three, and then some numbers down at the bottom. In a normal time, and I'm just picking these rates out of the blue. These are not the real rates, but you know, I'm gonna do this rates going down, and then I'm gonna flip it around and do it rates going up. So you can see it going both ways. And I'll try to use the exact same rates as best I can going up and going down. But under a normal circumstance, the longer out you go, three years, is gonna be a higher interest rate than the short term, one year at four. So I just, just made it simple, 654, 543, 432. Okay, again, this is just math. It doesn't have to be on the money at all. If you're going, oh, that's not the current rate, please don't write because I totally get that. I'm just doing flat out math. Now, in year one, this is what's gonna happen after you buy all three of these at $5,000 a piece. In year one, you're gonna get 6% interest on $5,000. It's gonna give you 300 bucks. You're gonna get 5% on 5,000. It's gonna give you 250 and you're gonna get 4% on $5,000, and it's gonna give you $200, which is 750 bucks. That's what you're gonna earn in year one. When we move to year two, we get a change. The three-year rate, 300, 300, 300, that's still gonna be the same. The 250, 250 for the two-year rate isn't gonna change. But all of a sudden, the one-year rate, the one-year CD is gonna expire. And instead of the rate being 4%, it's now gonna be 3%, and you get $150. 
Now let's go to year three, the third year of doing this. Three-year terms, everything's the same. The two years is the same as it was last year, except that this year for our final year, you're going to get a, a lower rate. So the first two years are 250, 250. And then I'm assuming it's going to go from 4% to 3% and 3% of 5,000 is $150. Again, I'm just trying to keep it real simple. You know, 1% drops each year. And we're going to do the same going upward on the next one. For the final one-year term of year three, again, the rates have dropped, so you get 100 bucks. So when you add them all up and you go, well, what, what did I get out of this? For the, doing the split, you get 750 the first year, 700 the second year, 550 the third year, falling rate environment for a total of $2,000. If you threw the 15000 all on a one-year rate, and then you have to keep renewing as they're dropping. You're going to get 600, 450, 300, 1350. You lost out on $650. Let's do the same thing all over again, except this time the rates are going to be climbing year after year, again by one percentage point. We'll start off exactly the same 5,000 bucks, you know, three different terms, three, two, one, and the rates are 654. In year two, though, they're going to go up. Six is going to become seven. 5 is going to become 6, and 4% is going to become 5, and then so on and so forth for year 3. Okay, so this is how it falls out. The 300 goes across for all of them because it's a 3-year term. It's the same. This 2-year term, 250, 250, becomes again 250, 250, even though this moved from 5% to 6%. I've kept it at 250 because it's not going to move on you. I'm just showing you where the rate went. Now, since the rate jumps again for our third year, you get a change here. All of a sudden, you're going to get 350, assuming you took another two-year term, okay? But where the action is, is in the one year going upward because you're going to keep gaining. First year, it's 200. Second year, you went from 4% to 5%. Now you get 250, and then you go from 5% to 6%, and you get 300 bucks. When you add these up, you ultimately you get... 750 on the split, 800, 950, you get $2,500 on the split, splitting them up. But if you took the entire 15,000 and just wrote it on those rates, the 4% rate, the 5% rate, and the 6% rate, you'd get 4% of 15,000 is 600, then 5% is 750, 6% is 900, comes out to 2250. It's close to the 2500, but you're still behind $250. That's why under normal circumstances, the CD ladder works great. Okay, last one. I know your eyes are probably glazing over at the moment. So I'm going to try to do this really, really fast. And if you want to go through this, I'm going to just, you know, it'll be on the screen. Stop it and take a look. Left-hand side of this green thing, rates are dropping. And on the right-hand side, the rates are climbing year after year. Year one, two, three, they're going up. The other ones, it's coming down. I started off with real rates. These are the rates today in this inverted yield situation. Three-year rate is 475, two-year five, one-year 540. Now I'm assuming that it starts to drop at some point here and all of a sudden now we're, we're I, I took it down by half a point. That's basically what I did with all of these. 420, you know, 475 becomes 425, five becomes 450, 540 becomes 490, same thing over here. The rates are dropping the math here is exactly the same. Here, the same thing's going on. They're going up by a half. Math is the same. But the outcome is different because you start off different and you hold it that way. That the short-term rate is better than the long-term rate. So this is what happens if you do the split. If you split it up and do the latter, you get 757, 732, 655, 2145. If you take the whole 15 grand and roll it on the one year term, you get 810, 735, 652. You make more money, even in a falling environment. You come out $52 ahead. Or to reverse this is what you know I have here. If you're doing the latter, you lose 52 bucks. You miss it. You don't get it. Same thing on the other side in a climbing environment. Again, you can look at the math. I'm not going to go through it, but you don't make 427.50. That's what you leave on the table because you get 3000 bucks by not splitting it. But this is a rare circumstance being in an inverted yield environment. So what should you do with this? Well, 
I'm not a financial analyst and all that sort of stuff, and I don't even think you're allowed to do financial advice on YouTube. I think that's against the law. But I will just say this as a mathematician. As I look at this, to me, it seems the logical thing to do is to stay in short-term things, unless you want to gamble. If you can gamble, you know, you might get lucky and take a five-year and the rates would, you know, drop like crazy and, uh, and come out ahead. But it would seem to me that from a mathematical point of view, just looking at this, you'd be in a short term. And when you start to see the rates flip to normal, where the longest time is the biggest rate, then I would go into doing this CD ladder. It just seems like, you know, you might want to wait for that. A lot to digest there. Hope it all made sense. Hope it helps you out. If you're going to be investing in CDs, it's best to know how you get the most amount for your money. And most importantly, when you're retired, how not to go backwards in your money. You don't want to be losing money if you can actually make something. Uh, if you like this, uh, you know, give us a little thumbs up, hit the like button, that kind of thing. I kind of know to go down this path maybe a little bit more. And also subscribe to the channel. We always appreciate that too. Until the next video, thank you for watching. Ooh.